Hello everyone, this is Dave Johnson. Welcome to Moonride, where I am channeling the man in the moon. So, um, forgive me for uh, disappearing for a while. I was in Asia and I got really, really sick. Um, I'm getting better now. I'm almost there on the mend. But um, I just want to mention it because I noticed that a lot of people in this se uh, season are sort of experience a lot of malaise and sicknesses and stuff. Um, I also want to mention, you know, if you saw my video from Angkor Wat, I was sort of channeling a spirit of healing and you might be like, well, wait a minute, Dave, you were channeling some healing and it didn't happen, you know, it's not working. Well, actually, I'll tell you the leg that I was having the problem with did heal and it was like almost immediate. Maybe it took three or four days, but um, it really made a huge difference. I just got something else. So I just want to mention too, if, if you're asking spirit for some help with something, sometimes it takes a little while to, to fix that, you know, sometimes also we have to look at what's going on really, mm, you know, maybe it was kind of good for me to be in bed for two weeks and um, not do anything. Um, maybe I just, I needed that in my own personal life. Again, I say these things because I want y'all to know, you know, spirit really is listening it's just more complicated and sometimes we just have to go through things and experience them life isn't going to be perfect rainbows all the time so um with that in note i'm gonna uh do this reading it is on politics it is on the house uh again a little preamble here you know i had some ambiguous yeah the house is gonna win the democrats are gonna win the house maybe not and then i thought ultimately they would um you know i'm perfectly capable of making mistakes if you're learning to channel you'll know that you will make mistakes because the future's not fixed but also Sometimes I realize I'm just not asking the right questions. So when I'm asking who's going to win, I think it's pretty unclear whether this really is a win for the Republicans. And uh, at any rate, I want to see, you know, kind of what's next. I don't think it's over with the House of Reps. I think that um, other things may be going on. And I won't say any more. Let's just like find out from spirit what's happening. All right. So, House of Representatives, and let's see if I can make a really good question here. Uh, I don't know if I can make a great question. How about we'll just start with what's going to happen at the now Republican-led House of Representatives? Okay, so um, I'm seeing a uh, uh, fellow, um, the, the now leader of the house, and um, he has a broken sword. So um, obviously, you know, this is no surprise. Things are not going well. And what's interesting about the broken sword is not, it's like literally broken. There's just a little tip there, but he is stabbing himself, um, the Republican leader of the house. He's stabbing himself. Okay. Hmm. All right, so um, give me a minute here. Who's walking down the stairs? Oh, okay, I was wondering what this is. Um, you know how, um, in South America, um, they uh, sometimes had these pyramids and um, in some cultures, I don't know the details, they actually had a, a sacrifice, like a human sacrifice. Um, I don't mean to generalize about South America, by the way, but this is just a, you know, sort of a trope that I'm seeing. Um, I know not all of those uh, religions were like that, but um, this is the image. The speaker, now speaker of the house, he um, is getting up to the top of the stairs and he's like a human sacrifice. So I don't literally think this is true. I think it's a metaphor that he is going to be sacrificed. All right. So it seems like he won't last. So how is this going to happen? What's going to happen? Let's ask spirit that way. What's going to happen to him? So I see Bobert, but she's not alone. There's like all these sort of arguing Republicans and they seem to like represent the most extreme side. And 
um, the more central practice or pragmatic sides. It's just arguing and arguing and arguing and pushing and pulling. So now instead of Republicans fighting Democrats, um, we're seeing Republicans fight each other. So, um, you know, this is, you know, you reap what you sow. Uh, if you live on conspiracy theories, then you have to accept that they're going to create conspiracy theories about you. Mm hmm. Okay, Jim Jordan has shown up. So look, um, these guys are really trying to cover their tracks. They've done some things wrong. Jim Jordan has done things wrong. Uh, and they're trying to cover up any investigation into themselves by just, you know, doing this, doing that, whatever they're doing. But Jim Jordan keeps looking over his shoulder. All right, what's Jim Jordan looking at? Oh, he's looking at the Department of Justice, um, which is um, investigating him and it getting closer and closer to him. So he's getting more frantic. Jim Jordan is getting frantic. He's really trying to find anything to distract from the investigation into himself. I now see a pair of handcuffs. Now I see Jim Jordan, they're coming after him. They're putting him in handcuffs. He's crying like a baby. And he's alternatively angry and then crying. What's going on, Jim? So a prison, a prison doors open. And they do, they put him inside. All right, so Spirit, are we gonna see consequences for those people like Jim Jordan? Okay, robed judge. Like the old school, like where they have the funny wigs on. He's looking very serious. Um, it th this is important. It's not just the judge answering. There's a lot of information that comes out in what looks like a trial for Jordan. A lot of information. And that is more important even than the punishment in that we know the truth. We know what happened. Uh, he is uh, saying things under oath which are followed up. They implicate other people. Eventually, it might be that they turn on each other. Uh, but let's let's go. Let's not go too far, Dave. Um, so he's in court. There's a particular woman that is testifying against him. And I don't know who this is, but she has like a kind of a grayish hair that goes like this, kind of a short gray hair. And she's testifying about him and she's holding flowers. She's holding flowers that are like flowers with like spray on paint, could be like a gold spray on paint. She sits there with flowers like, like held like this. I don't know what that means. Uh, but she's um, crying and uh, and it's persuading people. It's like, it's like a person, you know, sometimes don't things don't become real for you until you actually speak to a person who has suffered it. That is, if you hear about a bank robbery, you're like, oh yeah, so what? The bank robbed, rob, they have plenty of money. But if you see the teller who had a nervous breakdown after they were robbed because she was so freaked out, then you have, then you're like, yeah, they need to be punished because you see the human element of these consequences, not just numbers. So it seems like this is important that we are seeing um, people who were harmed, maybe threatened by the Jim Jordans. <clears throat> So is there anyone else that we know of that's gonna be punished here? Who else will face consequences? So I see a number of people, but they're kind of just an outline. 
who else is there? The name Steve Scalise uh, comes up, and I find that interesting because, you know, when I do this work, it's really hard to come up with the names. It's something my mind does um, or spirit does. It's like I forget names, but Steve Scalise, that just comes up um, as a name. Actually, Bobert comes up too. Her face is clearer. My, I think Marjorie Taylor Green. Uh, those are the ones that like are kind of familiar places. There are others that are less familiar and uh, they seem like men um, who have been just more subtle in their deceptions. I don't know if all of these people are gonna go to jail but they will face consequences. And it will be like, first of all, they you know lose their jobs or they're humiliated. So that's a good question for, for us. Are, is the balance gonna change because some people are forced to leave the House of Reps? Two people are gonna change in the House of Reps. Two people and possibly three, but I'm pretty sure that two people are going to change in the House of Reps, and I know that um, Santos is uh, one of them that will, you know, likely change. I think he's in the House of Reps. So let's uh, maybe I'll ask the question like this: Is the balance of power going to shift to the Democrats? Okay, I'm trying not to project my own images here. <laughs> you know, when you do this work, obviously you have your own agenda, right? You gotta try to be objective. Objectively speaking, spirit, what will the, how will the balance of power change? It's okay, so there's like a marker and then there's another marker. And it sort of, it's not exactly like the Democrats will take over. That's not exactly the case. But what is it? How could we explain it? Okay, here's some scales and the scales are just becoming fairer. So I wonder if it's more a centrist, like, okay, it'll still be Republican, but they are gonna give up the weird imbalance stuff and the centrists, you know, maybe a centrist Republican are gonna start to realize you know, we, we got to get on the ball here. Okay, so Susan Collins face shows up. And she goes like this. Oh, my God. It's like she's just run a marathon and she's just like, I'm just exhausted. And I'm not running another one. <laughs> <You know>? So, <coughs> um, pardon me. Um, <coughs> Yeah, it's still cold still hasn't gone away. Um, <clears throat> anyway, cons, what's she doing? A bit of a backdoor deal. Like, look, uh, let's go back a little bit to being the centrists. I played the game your way. And now we need to go back to the real world. You know, I'm um, Susan Collins. Have you ever heard hear her? She has a really um, nice voice. It's very persuasive. It's kind of like a really good, you know, school teacher. She makes you listen to her. Um, don't suppose I like her, but it, you know, she is persuasive in that sense, and that's what I see her doing. Kind of cooing to all of these people, like, "Hey, you know, maybe we might want to change." and just sort of working that angle of, you know, that kind of Republican which tries to persuade as opposed to the Republicans which try to delude, right? She's more um, realistic um, and just like, you know, this policy of being anti-Biden about everything, anti-Democrat about everything, maybe that's not a winning strategy. I don't think the Republicans are going to figure this out right away. I think it's going to be a gradual process. 
and I'm just inspired to say this, it gives Biden a couple of years for things to work out, right? So a, a lot of things that we don't, we don't go into a recession. If Putin disappears, you know, even if nothing gets done and else gets done in our government, that will be huge for, for Biden and the Dems. If nothing terrible happens and if good things happen, people will have time to, um, to regroup. Now, I hope you all don't think that I am totally go Democrats. I, I'm, I don't always agree with um, everything they do. Um, I won't go into the details of that. I'm actually pretty left, so I would say I'm even left of the Dems. But um, understand that they are at least leading. They are doing realistic things that are possible at this time. Uh, one hopes they uh, will work out for the sake of our nation, but also for the sake of our type of government and that they will allow people to understand that democracy is really important, even if it is sometimes ineffective. We uh, in America are a democratic society, also in Australia, it's a marvelously more democratic society, let me tell you. But this is what's really going on here. I'll also notice there's a shift. The shift is in progress of, you know, into this extremely right crazy. And, you know, that's not done yet. It'll take a couple years to devolve from that. And I don't necessarily think there's going to be a big fat leftward swing. But um, I see Joe Biden now win a ticker tape parade. So something good's happening for him. Uh, okay. So is there anything else we could know about the House of Reps? This seems to be um, something just to reassure us. The sun's going to continue to come up every day. You know, even though there's this crazy times we live in, there is still the consistency of you know Mother Earth. There's still the consistency of the um, you know the world we live in, and I know that that it is in peril. You know, environmentally speaking, we are in deep trouble. But it just reminds me that there is time to work these things out and don't um, don't give up because you think that it's impossibility. It's almost like tomorrow is a day um, and and tomorrow is not going to be like today. Maybe we just all had to work through this extremism and just had to be exposed for us so that we could call it what it is. The future of the Republican Party does not look good. It is a sort of eclipse that I'm now seeing of that party. So uh, it, we are getting closer to uh, equanimity, getting closer to justice. And as you watch the House of Representatives, just notice that Every day, the battle is so obvious. Uh, the battle between what's right and wrong is so clear cut for all of us. And rather than um, stress, let's enjoy it. Let's watch as we see these shifts occur and as we see the extremists be sort of pushed away as we see the Republicans finally address the problems that exist in their own party. This just lets us know that uh, time is moving forward and we are learning a good deal about how uh, American democracy works. Thanks so much for watching.